Okay, I had mentioned in a previous video that I was going to not put out a garden this year and that I was going to spend some time uh, fixing this mess where uh, the weeds basically took it over while I was battling cancer. And I wanted to show you some things and I'm going to make a statement that a lot of people are probably going to find alarming in that I'm going to go back to traditional gardening in the ground. Um, I have these raised beds with the drip irrigation system and every one of them. And it's on a hillside that kind of faces to the southwest. You know, the top of the hill is north, the bottom is southwest. And uh, the reasons why that a raised bed garden doesn't work for me. One, this wood only lasted six years and I can literally kick my feet through it. <laughs> six years. Look at what the cost of lumber is. Well, shoot, the raised bed and soil, the lumber and soil for one raised bed, it just makes it cheaper to just go buy your own groceries at a store and pay the exorbitant prices. But the other thing is to raise beds when they're up off the ground, you know, the, these are 12 inch raised beds. It just rained yesterday and let me show you something. You see this soil here, like I said, it just rained yesterday, it rained quite a bit yesterday. You literally have to go down. That's probably about four inches before the, before the soil starts to get damp. So it dries out super quick. The bad thing about that, where all you people that live in like cities and you have like an unlimited water supply, I'm on a cistern. I have whatever rain we get is what my water supply is. So when I went to the raised bed garden, well, let me even back up a little bit farther. I tried to put a garden out. I bought this property in 2015. I tried to put a traditional garden out in 2016. There is, I used a tiller. I think I only made two passes up and down this hill. And there's literally thousands of rocks over there. A great big, huge pile of rocks. And basically the ground was so hard that I just kind of knew, even if I got it tilled, in time to plant the garden it just wasn't going to do very good so my whole idea was i would build raised beds um it, i started on probably in like august or september of 2016 i started building these raised beds so that i'd have them ready in 2017 and i'll put a picture up because this looked amazing when it was done what i did was i flattened out sections of this hill big enough to four to put four foot by eight foot raised beds i had three foot walkways down the center three foot walkways between each raised bed so in 2017 when i put the garden out it was just like eh, it didn't do that great now i didn't have the drip irrigation yet but um it just didn't do very good and the reason being was because i was using store-bought soil that store-bought soil is basically sterile it's sold as a ph of seven it has no beneficial microbes in it and basically it took that whole year 2017 for those beneficial microbes to move into the soil no matter how much you added fertilizer and stuff the plants just didn't produce anything near like what i was used to gardening in the ground all right so the other thing that happened too was i started to realize in 2017 that first year like how hot this soil gets lay your hand on top of it on any day and you can just feel the heat just radiating off of that well what that does that allows you to start earlier in the year gardening now it took me a while to figure that out but like if our last frost date was say uh, May 5th, you could probably really start 
planting your plants out that are uh, sensitive to frost a couple of weeks early and then just make sure you got them covered up with something like my uh, things that I built to go over top of the beds to keep, kind of keep them from frost in the early part of the year. And then also at the end of the year, you have an extra couple of weeks to grow. That sounds great. It really does. It sounds like the ideal growing system. But I come up from doing in-ground gardens on and off for nearly 20 years and moved to raised bed systems. And five years after they're built, I'm ready to tear them down and go back to in-ground. You look at what it costs. So this soil in these beds, they need topped off every year. So you first build the beds and then through compaction, the soil sinks. And maybe you didn't get them filled up all the way to begin with, right? So the second year, you got to add more soil. And then this soil is so light, the wind just blows it away. Like, <laughs> I've had to put soil in these every year. Two pallets, a hundred bags of soil it takes to fill up these eight beds and top them off every year. That's $300 a year in soil alone. Well, that's crazy. I never had to put soil in in-ground gardens before. <laughs> I just put whatever compost that I made on my property and they did fine. Um, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. I said that I was gonna come out here, I was gonna tear all these raised beds down. I'm gonna bring my tiller in here, till this all the way under everywhere except for, now I do have some galvanized metal raised beds. This one's gonna stay. My blueberries are in fire rings, they're gonna stay, but all of these wooden raised beds, they're going out the door. So the other thing I was gonna mention was the soil gets so hot that in 2018, I spent, I was thinking it was around $600 for a drip irrigation system. <clears throat> you can see part of it here. Basically it terminates at this bed, but it runs all the way down this fence row. And then it runs all the way across the garden. Then it runs all the way back up. And up here in this corner, I have a thing where you can put an electronic metering device. It's up here somewhere. It's probably lost in all the weeds. But anyways, there's a device up here that you can attach an electronic thing to. My hose comes out of my basement over there. It's got the door open. Drag the hose over here, attach it up. I can set it to run for X number of minutes, however many times a day I want to. Feeds every one of these beds. You know, you got your main supply here, and then you have your feed lines that go out. And I mean, that was expensive also. All of that, so the garden in 2017 didn't do very good. Just the heat, they had to constantly be watered. It was a pain in the butt to keep up with. The soil wasn't that great because the microbes hadn't moved in yet. But the garden I had in 2018, after I put this drip irrigation system in, was absolutely amazing. I grew so much stuff in these raised beds. The problem was, I kept running out of water. Like I have this master, massive cistern, it's actually two, two great big cisterns that are interconnected. Part of it's sitting over there. And then the other parts actually in the basement of the house and they're connected. What happens is it rains for every inch of rain that we get over close to a thousand gallons of water gets put in the cistern. But what happens is in July and August when, when it gets to be our dry period, I would just run out of water because it takes so many gallons of water to water these beds every day because the soil dries out so quick. Like, I kinda wish when I did this, I would have done like 50-50 clay soil in this home uh, store-bought soil, but I didn't and I had to pay the price because I just didn't know any better from the get-go when I built these. Then what happened was, so, when I built these also, I didn't use pressure treated lumber because back then raised beds in 2015, 2016, when I was researching it, 
everybody was talking about all these harsh chemicals cancer causing chemicals and pressure treated lumber which turned out to be false hasn't been used in 20 years but because of all the misinformation that's out there on the internet i didn't buy pressure treated lumber and of course six years in they're pretty much all rotted out matter of fact wherever you see that i've got these stakes these posts fence posts that wasn't there for any reason other than to hold the beds together see how they're splitting right there because they're so rotted the nails just pull out so i drove stakes in the ground last year just to get another year's usage out of these beds um but what ended up happening was of course i was still going through the cancer recovery and everything just went to crap you see all the weeds like i i almost want to cry every time i come out here so anyways today all these raised beds are getting tore apart i'm bringing the tiller in tilling this um some other things i did i put down weed cloth in every walkway and every row and also lined the insides of these beds so i got to take all of that out here i lined the walkways with sawdust and this sawdust has been breaking down into basically compost and there, there's other places where it's actually in soil contact it is like the darkest looking compost ever but so i got to take all the beds down i got to get rid of all this weed cloth i got to get rid of all the drip irrigation which i'm going to save all this stuff and i'm even going to save these old boards because they'll go in the compost pile or maybe i'll use them to keep the water from you know i'm on a hillside if i point this camera straight you can kind of see that it's, it's a hillside if i went down there and pointed it straight it'd make a whole lot more sense um it's probably in the 50 foot run of this it probably drops 12 feet so it might be 60 foot run it probably drops about 12 feet so the the top of the hill is 12 feet taller than the bottom of the hill yeah, within a 60 foot space and you can kind of if you want to see what the angle looks like it's not a huge angle but one of the reasons why I built these raised beds also was I was afraid if I did traditional gardening, all the soil up there at the top of the hill would end up down here once you tilled it and loosened it up. I don't think that's going to be the case now because it doesn't do it in between the rows. So why would it do it from the top of the hill to the bottom? So um, it is on a hill, but it's not that steep of a hill. So I'm going to leave this bed because i already started a video on seed to seed gardening and i basically need this bed to stick around until i finish up those video segments and then i can get rid of this bed too but all these other ones are going to go i'm going to try to get it done before the rain moves in today and uh i'll go ahead and put some some uh footage where you can see me turn these down i'm basically going to go get a sledgehammer start down here at the bottom knock them down there are some things i'm going to keep like these, these uh, things here that I built out of two by fours, they were pressure treated two by fours. And then I used field fence. These are for like cucumbers and melons and anything that likes to grow on a wall. I've got several of these around here. I'm gonna keep them, but the beds themselves are gonna go. Anyways, I'll go ahead and get started on that now. I moved this camera over to an area of the garden that's in shade right now. I don't know how long it's going to be on before it kicks out due to the heat of the sun shining down on the camera. If you've ever recorded videos, you know that happens all the time. But hopefully you can watch me get some of this work done.
this waterlogged lumber is way heavier than you think it is. saw me doing was when I first laid out these raised beds I put weed fabric between every bed and every row and then on top of that every year I put three to four inches of wood chips and I always wondered if the wood chips were doing any good I could obviously tell they were breaking down but this is basically what come out of the tops of the weed fabric that you saw me pulling up now in some places the wood chips aren't all the way broke down like this but I think they're broke down enough to where it's not going to cause like a nitrogen deficiency and uh, this actually turned out really well way better than I thought that it was and of course some places are deeper than others because of the way I just rolled it up but you can tell that's you know a couple inches deep and the worms Oh my, I noticed that when I was over here moving stuff around, like the worms were just crazy. The number of worms that are in this, watch. I'm not gonna be able to find any now because I'm looking for them. <laughs> but when I flipped this over earlier, there's probably eight or nine worms in that one little spot. Yeah, wouldn't you know it? But this is the kind of stuff that is basically on top of now there is some vegetation because remember I said in the first part that the weed fabric did great. You can see where I pulled it up. There's not a single weed. All the weeds is on top of the weed fabric. <laughs> That's from where like all the plants would, you know, go to seed and the wind would blow it or birds would drop them. And then suddenly you have a whole bunch of weeds growing on top of your weed fabric. And, uh, I had to stop right here where you saw me stop at. I got to move all these boards before I can do this part. I still have these raised beds over here to take down. And I still have some more fabric to pull up and strip all of the stuff off the top of them. 
but yeah this is like really excellent material that i'm then going to take and spread out so once i get all this weed fabric up and all these beds tore down i'm going to spread this material back out to try to make it as level as possible on top of this clay and then i'm going to till it under so then what i'm probably going to do is get a bunch of tarps and lay in here for a while to kill all the seeds and then hopefully by next year i will have a really nice garden again um, because that's basically what was happening was you can see the beds they just have so many weeds in them and it's where you know i i kept the beds cleaned out this uh clay by the way is super slick i just about fell and busted my butt these beds i kept cleaned out until i got cancer and then in the two summers that i was dealing with cancer about to be three you know i just couldn't get out here and pull the weeds of course that made plants go to seed uh then the seeds fall and you have things like there's some sort of a uh, i don't know if that's a cabbage that's probably some sign of a cabbage this right here is some kind of a uh, pea <laughs> The white blooms are peas and uh that's kind of what you run into though when you just let stuff go so the whole goal is i'll i'm going to wait and tear this bed down last because there's some stuff here that i want to go to seed there's some more peas there there's some garlic there's some onions that are getting ready to go to seed now and there's also some red clover and i going to collect all the seeds from these to plant in the future so um but that's the only bed um all these other ones are going to get tore down i still haven't figured out there is actually weed barrier under all of these beds they were literally had weed barrier put down and then the beds filled up the weed barrier was put down inside the boards stapled to the boards and then they were filled up with soil This soil here will be spread out too and worked into the clay. And I don't think that I'm going to have like a rocking garden next year, but it'll probably take a couple years to get this clay in some decent shape. You, you probably can't tell it, but that's really hard. Like it's wet right now and even moving my feet on it don't do anything. Although it does cause me to almost fall and break my neck every now and then. Anyways... This is all for now. I will start doing some more of this in time lapse in just a little bit. Wow, I tell you what, that was a lot harder than it looked. I now have all of the walkway weed barrier up between all the beds except for there's this corner up here. This corner up here isn't done yet this corner up here isn't done yet and that side over there along the length is not done yet but i got all the other beds done that is way harder than it looks and uh you know trying to get the dirt off of there is kind of like the hard part because it's got roots and all kinds of stuff that just kind of holds everything in place but I'll tell you, it's quite a bit of a good, great soil. And uh, now what I think I have to do, it's actually getting ready to rain. They're calling for rain for like the next two or three days. And uh, so now what I'm going to have to do, I think I'm going to have to take like a garden rake or a shovel and take the soil off of the, these raised beds that also have the weed barrier. So I'm going to have to move the soil so I can get the weed barrier out. Maybe I can take the soil and stack it up on one of these ends. And I, I don't know, like maybe put half of the soil on this end, half of the bed soil here, the other half over there. Then take the cloth out and move the soil back. It's probably what I'm going to have to do. And I'm going to have to do that for all these beds here, except for the metal ones. Also over there, I've got 
my one of my cucumber uh, stands that I made out of field fences, some two by fours. I'm keeping that. Um, I've got a couple of these because I use them for other things besides cucumbers. They actually work great for pumpkins. Pretty much any kind of melon will grow up a trellis like that. And field fence is just like the perfect size. The nice thing about it with cucumbers, and I've probably got pictures or video somewhere I'll try to find. So when the cucumbers grow up this, and then they start to mature, they actually drop down in between the, the fence. And then all I have to do is come out here, and I walk down here, and I basically just reach down and just pull them out from underneath because they're all just hanging down like this you know they actually just fall right through and uh honeydews now i think these are like five and a half by five and a half or something like that sometimes smaller honeydews will do that when they're forming sometimes watermelon will do it sometimes pumpkin will do it but basically what happens is they'll fall through when they're small and then the vines are so strong they just hang there and ripen and I've not really ever found any of them that, that come off from like weight or anything like that. It's, it's pretty amazing how tough the vines are. So I've got a couple of these that I built. They're really simple to do. It's basically just a, I don't know, maybe a three, six, nine feet long sheet of field fence, which I believe is 48 or 52 inches tall. I can't remember right now. And something to just kind of like hold it up in the center. So you build a frame tack the field fence on and just let everything grow up it works really well but yeah some of this soil is pretty amazing looking and again i never put soil down in these walkways this is all this is all wood chips you can actually see some of the wood chips never decayed all the way and i don't know why they didn't decay but there were a couple of spots mostly seemed like it was along this fence area you can kind of see it plain as day here where you kind of see like down through there and it was like right up against the fence i don't know if it was just in there really thick you can see it pretty good right here too and see it just never decayed maybe it wasn't in ground contact maybe that's what it was maybe it was sitting on top of the weed barrier and didn't have ground contact so it didn't decay but all of it was sitting on top of the weed barrier right I mean, that's what I did. I put the weed barrier down, and then I'd, every year I'd put, um, it was 80 bags, 80 bags of wood chips from Tractor Supply. They are three cubic foot bags. I first started out the first year, and I used the, like, the bigger chunks. I don't remember. There's one's called a flake, and the other one's called something else. But whichever, so the first year I used the bigger one, and I just didn't like it. So the, all the years after that, I went to the smaller ones, which broke down a lot quicker. That I think that's why I didn't like the bigger ones. Like they wasn't breaking down hardly at all. Took them a couple years to break down. But the small ones, they'd break down in like a year or two. So I don't know, five, six, six years of doing that was what the soil was on top of that weed barrier. It wasn't actually soil, it was broken down wood chips. You can kind of see this path right here. I used to bring, um, I got a, uh, a garden trailer that I could bring in here and it basically wore down like two ruts from the wheels so much. I don't know if you can see the ruts or not. You probably can't. But yeah, there's like two ruts down through there through the center. I used to have like wheelbarrows. I, I built these rows so wide to get wheelbarrows in here. And what I found out is the wheelbarrow is not very easy to manage on this hillside once you get a lot of vegetables in it. Where the, the trailer, which is four wheels instead of just one, worked really well. So that's kind of why. But when I get all this done, these rows aren't going to be that wide. It's going to be a traditional garden. So it might be an 18 inch wide row. Might be a two and a half foot wide row for like corn might be just a few inches wide for stuff like green onions and uh i'm hoping it works out really well this hard clay soil it's starting to dry out now it it's literally so hard 
like you see how just like it's cracking like it's it's you can't even crumble it hardly use a lot of force and it'll crumble but so that's kind of the goal i'm gonna get all of this wood chips that's decayed tilled in with this clay and i'm kind of guessing maybe in a couple years that it'll be a halfway decent garden as long as the soil don't wash down the hill i kind of was trying to do some research online about that and most people say you know 15 to 20 degrees it'll pretty much stay in place but if you go any steeper than 15 or 20 degrees it won't and i think i'm kind of like right at that 15 to 20 degree area i haven't actually measured it and checked to see what the slope was but seems like 15 or 20 degrees is probably right anyways getting ready to rain i got a black fly that's buzzing around my head so i'm gonna go ahead and shut this camera off get inside and uh work on this after the rain's gone in a couple of days